Don't you just love VAR action? We got a lot of it during game week two, but unlike some other countries, I didn't see a lot of people complaining. So join me as I recap the league that may have the best VAR system in the world, the MLS. I'm your one and only host, Anthony LaRosa. Just like last review show, I collected three points throughout the 13 league games we saw that I felt were important enough to bring to your attention. For my first point, Austin FC have officially arrived in MLS. In only their second game in existence, the Los Verdes made history as they fought back from a 1-0 deficit to claim their first ever win. Austin went into halftime being a goal down after Colorado scored off a corner kick. Going into the second half though, we finally saw Austin FC score their franchise opener which came from former New England star Diego Fagundes. During the second half, we saw what type of system head coach Josh Wolf is aiming for. Austin tore apart the Colorado midfield and every time they had an attack, it was spearheaded by four to five guys pushing forward. Seven minutes after their opening goal, Austin pounced on a slow moving Colorado, making a tackle in the final third and capitalizing on the transition with DP Cecilio Dominguez finishing off the chance. Dominguez would also seal the game four minutes after scoring his first. In around 11 minutes, Austin totally reversed the game which was deserved. Along with the impressive performance, the support at an away game for this team was very awesome to see. It's great to see fans in the stadium again, and this is just a taste of what we're in for when this team opens up their new stadium in June. The second point I took from this week was that if you're good at set pieces, that could win you a game. And if you're bad at them, well, it can definitely lose you a game too. The match that gave me this lovely information was FC Cincinnati's trip to Yankee Stadium. NYCFC scoring five goals against Cincinnati is something we have seen before. But what we haven't seen before is a team conceding five goals from set pieces in one match. In my Game Week 2 preview, I pinpointed Cincinnati's weakness of dealing with aerial balls. And well, it seems like the coaching staff at Cincy didn't watch my video. Out of the seven goals this team conceded in their first two games, six of them have come from set pieces. Allow me to paraphrase something I once heard from the great Jimmy Conrad. Set pieces are all about the desire to win a ball. The only thing that makes a difference on balls played in the air off a corner is the hunger to win it. Other than height, maybe, if a player really wants to win a ball, then they'll win it. It's all about being more competitive than the opponent and that's where you have to criticize these players. Does this Cincinnati team have what it takes to put up a real fight in matches like this? I guess we'll have to wait and see, but all credit to NYCFC for their ability in these types of situations. I try to cover many different teams in this league, and with that I try not to talk about the same players or teams in back-to-back -back videos. But for this case, it's impossible not to talk about the only man to score a hat-trick so far this season. Chitarito! We got a glimpse of what Chicharito could do this season after his brace in the Galaxy's win against Inter Miami. With those two goals, he tied his goal tally from last year, and this week he surpassed that tally with a hat-trick against the New York Red Bulls. Super impressive performance from the little P, and it's exactly what you would have expected. He made terrific runs, found himself at perfect positions in the box, and was able to have that one-touch finish like we've seen in his days at Manchester United. Especially in his first goal, I think most strikers would have given up on that run after the shot. But with Chicharito's determination, we saw him made a last ditch effort and squeeze that ball into the goal at a very tight angle. That is the type of stuff that I think Chicharito has worked on since last year. He's more confident in his abilities and it's paying off. I know I said this last week, but Chicharito described last season as the worst year in his life. So, seeing him score and prove himself again is so great to see. Now it's up to him to continue this form. Now once my three points are over, it's time to have some fun. And there was something that happened this weekend that everyone voiced different opinions about on Twitter. It revolves around Real Salt Lake's 20 year old keeper, David Ochoa. For me, I first noticed Ochoa during this year's Olympic qualifiers, and I thought he performed pretty well. Through watching him, I also noticed that he definitely had a personality for a player of such a young age. He was doing some veteran time-wasting moves, commanding his area, all good things you want to see from a younger player under pressure. But this week, he really announced himself to the MLS world through some interesting actions. To set it up, Real Salt Lake traveled to Minnesota to play in front of the well-known supporter section, the Wonderwall. 
Now I can't quite confirm if there was anything said between the supporters and Ochoa during the game, but there were a few chippy moments from Ochoa that would have not made him a favor of the Minnesota fan base. After Salt Lake pulled off an underdog victory, Ochoa celebrated by punting a ball into the Wonderwall supporters. Obviously, this caused some uproar, with Minnesota players confronting the keeper, which evolved into a big situation where staff from both teams were involved. Following the incident, Minnesota head coach Adrian Heath said that the keeper had an edge on him for someone who isn't that good. Players from Minnesota also chimed in, saying that he was a bit of a clown for his antics. This is where I want your opinions. Does this situation make you dislike Ochoa or do you respect him more for punting the ball? There's people on both sides saying that this was either straight disrespectful and others saying it shows energy and tenacity from such a young player. I don't wanna be the one to decide if he's my winner or loser of the week, so I'll let you decide in the comments. For the final portion of this review show, I'm gonna give my honors of Club of the Week to one very special team that I think stood out. And for game week two, it's Inter Miami. This week, Miami defeated a dominant Philadelphia team at Subaru Park. The same Subaru Park where the Union remained unbeaten for the entire 2020 regular season. Even though Philly pretty thoroughly dominated the game, they allowed Miami to pull off a comeback in the final 20 minutes. The first goal was produced by the Higuain brothers, Gonzalo and Frederico. Then in the 83rd minute, the 5'8 Frederico Higuain scored a header to complete the turnaround. This was the first time in MLS history that two brothers have found goals in the same match. So because of the brothers' heroics and Phil Neville securing his first win for Miami, they are my club of the week. That's all for my review of game week two. Remember to let me know what you think of the David Ochoa situation down below. For this next game week, I won't be doing a preview or review, and instead I'll be working on a longer project that will be coming out in the next week. I appreciate the support, and until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video.